there are certain properties or ways that you need to know about and the Jelly Baby Wave Machine, although interesting, does not actually show all of these properties. And what we use then is a ripple tank. Now a ripple tank is a nice way of showing waves and how they move. And we can think about plane waves, which are maybe made by this rather large dibber, so sort of fairly long at the front. We can also think about having a point source of waves. Okay, this is a bit like if you uh, throw a stone into a pond and what we get then are ripples moving off maybe a circular path. However, as, you're, as you can see, it's not that easy to show the ripple tank. And the ones at school are uh, fairly big and you do see the effect, but it's not, uh, not always that clear. So you need to know about a real ripple tank and how it's set up, but we can also model this using uh, this rather nice app on the phone. Uh, the details are in the link below. And what we can do is we can send out ripples, we can look at different effects uh, and some of the basic wave properties, both for electromagnetic and mechanical waves. There are a few properties I'd really like to look at. And these include uh, the reflection of waves, which is when the wave um, hits uh, another surface and bounces off. And in terms of light, we see this effect a lot with the mirror. And in terms of sound, we know this as an echo. So that's reflection of waves. We also have refraction. So refraction is where a wave changes direction as it moves from one medium into another, which is a different kind of density. So what we have here are the wave fronts. These are positions uh, at the front of a wave. We've got a nice plain wave front. As it comes along, you can see that one side of that wave front hits the other medium before the other, and it bends around. And again, we're gonna do, an, I've got another video which will be all about refraction and uh, some of the effects when we look at Snell's Law and so on. We also have an effect called diffraction. So diffraction is when a wave moves through a gap. And what we see is if the wavelength is approximately equal, equal to the gap size, the wave tends to spread out in all directions. Now the great thing about this app is that you can do loads of things. You can change the frequency, you can change the wavelength. If I make that gap, a little bit wider, so now the gap is a lot wider than the wavelength, then uh, the, the waves don't spread out as much. And this is really important. That's the reason that sound does diffract through an opening, so you can hear people around the door, but light doesn't, because the, the wavelength of light is so much smaller than the gap it's gone through. Now, there's only a, one other effect I'd like to talk about, which is uh, polarization. Now, polarization is only applicable to transverse waves, like light. And what I have here are two pieces of Polaroid. And what they do is they do let uh, a lot of light through. However, if I put uh, one piece of Polaroid in front of the other, we can see it starts to block out that light. And it's only when I rotate it again so that the two Polaroid filters are in the same plane that we let that light through. And again, I've got another video all about the polarization of electromagnetic waves. And you need to know about both light uh, and also a way you can do it yourself using microwaves in the lab. So. Reflection, refraction, diffraction, polarization, just some of the, the wave properties that you need to be aware of.